Now this list, this top 50 most adventurous open water swimmers, I see South Africa has the biggest, well the men's list at least, has the biggest uh, yeah, portion of swimmers. 11 South African men, the US is second with yeah. seven. Um, <coughs> so South Africans are clearly a bit nuts. What, 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 what is it about <laughs> South African swimmers, open water swimmers that... Um, I, I, you you know, know, it gives them this edge, I guess. Yeah, it's, oh. it's, it's definitely South Africans have a different attitude to most mm -hmm. people around the world. We really mm -hmm. do. You know, we, we found it. I didn't know we had a different attitude, but I've done a lot of traveling now to different places in the world. A lot to Russia, a lot to the US, uh, to, to South America. And wherever we go, just by being ourselves and trying to mm -hmm. achieve what we want to achieve, we get these unbelievable accolades of being huge daredevils where we actually just think we, we, we're doing something that, that makes sense to us. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a testament to the South African personality. And also we've got fantastic, especially in Cape Town conditions to train in. Mm -hmm. Karina will agree our waters are cold, they're rough. The, the, the psychology of swimming in open water in South Africa with our great white populations um, <laughs> also plays a role. So. Yeah. Um, I think that, that uh, and we, we, we're, a, we're a great family of swimmers, you know, we, 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 we help each other and we egg each other on and we team up and we, we travel and uh, over the years it's grown fantastically. I think that's why South Africa uh, is the largest uh, interest on that list of yeah. 50. We, we certainly have some of the wildest swims. Mm. Um, Cape Point is, it's not only the most beautiful swim in the world in my opinion, it's just, mm. it's got everything. It's got a killer wave to get through, killer surf. In the beginning, wild waters around the mm. point and currents and yeah. cold and sharks. <laughs> yeah. False Bay is the most <coughs> shark infested um, bay in the world and mm. you know that's where we swim. So mm. I, I agree with Ryan, it's, it's just that mentality of nothing's going to stop us. Um, and South Africans have always also been pioneers um, for decades now in, in long, mm. long distance swimming. I think yeah. start with Peter Bales and Penny yeah. and yeah. they've always been up there. Well even um, uh, Lewis Pugh's got a South African connection, doesn't he? Yeah, Correct. yeah. yeah. That's the only sort of ice man I could think of. But yeah. um, okay, and, I yeah. mean, I was going to ask you about some of the dangers. But I mean, when you do these swims, if um, at any point you decide you can't go any further, or there is danger, like how mm. how is how are they how are they regulated? Is well, someone you, following you the yeah, whole way? Yeah, you've got to experience. What about crew. eating and rehydrating? Yeah. How does no, that work? The, look, it's it's the crew is as important as your own mm. fitness and and mental Correct. sort of state and. Um, Recently, I, I attempted Cape Point again. It would have been the fourth time. Um, I'm not as hardcore as Ryan when it comes to the cold. <laughs> My system shuts down mm -hmm. after, after a while in a certain temperature, and that's exactly what happened. Um, the water was 12 degrees. It was the outside temperature was cold, and after an hour and a half, I, I, I shut down, and mm -hmm. the crew saw that, and I was still going, going I can go, keep going, it's fine. But there's like, Karina, it's over. You, you, um, trading on dangerous dangerous mm. ground now and and yeah so they um ideally your crew should know you well yeah. because they'll always like you said there'll always be a time in a swim where you doubt yourself and where you're struggling and when you know it's not going well and they should have the ability to go mm. she can get through this uh, or not um and yeah and feeding it's incredibly important obviously um i usually feed every half an hour or so i'm not great at eating but i'll kind of mm. gulp down a banana and some energy drinks but do you um, stay in the water or yeah, do you get absolutely. onto the boat and yeah open water so swimming rules are you not allowed to make any form of physical contact with anyone or the boat so they literally throw, throw you in your the food to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Okay. I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> and i'm usually shivering so much <laughs> i yeah. can't catch it um and and yeah but they're always there just just literally a couple mm. of meters from mm. you yeah Ryan, have, you, have you ever given up during a race? Uh, touch wood, no, not yet, I haven't. Um, and just to add to what uh, Karina was saying is hypothermia is obviously a killer, mm. um, but it's, it's, it's sadly quite a pleasant way to go because you get, you, you get past a point of, of actually caring mm. and you, th you still think you're doing okay, but you start to lose a little bit of direction as to, to why you're there and what you're doing and you, you forget about it and, and you, you, slip, you, you die quickly, mm. which makes your crew even more important. And just to, to add uh, to your, your previous question as well uh, on South Africans, South Africans started the International Ice Swimming Association. Yeah. Rambo Kai, who's a South African and uh, has, uh, is the founding member, has this vision <coughs> of regulating all ice swims, uh, cold water swims around the world. And an ice swim is defined as five degrees Celsius water in an outdoor body, uh, so not, a, not an indoor body yeah. of water, wearing only a Speedo type costume and cap. Uh, and as founding members, myself, Kyron Palferman, 
uh, Andrew Chin and Talks Mabble. for Veers. <laughs> we started this, this association and uh, that uh, and one of its primary focuses is firstly to, to encourage people to, to test themselves in the cold, mm -hmm. but safety is a very, very big priority mm -hmm. as well. And we have done a lot of research and homework usually using ourselves as the guinea pigs <laughs> a lot to figure out uh, how far you can push and what you have to do. Mental prep is, mm -hmm. is as important as, as the physical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, touching again on, on the, the South African contingent, uh, two other names that stood out here was this uh, gent Otto Ta Tanning, oh, yeah. Yeah. who's the <laughs> the <laughs> oldest uh, swimmer to cross the English Channel, but yeah. it's the second one, he's 73. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then this gentleman, Theodore Yak, Theo Yak yeah. he's done 91 Robin Island, Island swims. Yeah. It's Correct. Now, it's, it's Theo's, so Theo, I think Are so they like the benchmark for you guys? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Otto, firstly, the, the nicest, the nicest uh, gentleman uh, you, you'll ever meet and just a, just a, a legend. I absolutely mm. love him. He's been a mentor to, I'm sure, to Karina and, uh, as well in the past. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll take um, 18 strokes to get across a 25 meter pool. He'll take <laughs> maybe seven. Yeah. He's just got this long mm. wingspan. Uh, and Theo is also a great uh, open water swimmer. He holds the, the record for the number of, of island crossings and kind of by default, I've, I'm second on the list, but the gap is 92 versus mm -hmm. 52. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got some swimming to do. 